today we're going to add a beginning and an ending to our game. So I'm going to start off by creating a start layout and a game over layout. So I'm going to go to layout one and I'm going to rename that to game to keep it distinct from my other layouts. And I'm going to go ahead and rename event sheet one to game event sheet. And then under layout, I'm going to create a new layout and I'm going to add an event sheet to that new layout. I'm going to call my layout start, which means event sheet one, I'm going to rename to start event sheet. And for my start screen, I'm just going to have a tiled background. I'm going to load the image that I created for that. There is a template if you would like to edit any of the controls on there. We'll see this is 1040 by 800, which is the same size as our layout for our game. So I'm going to change my size to 1040 by 800. I'm going to go to view. I'm going to change both of my grid sizes to 40 and turn my grid on so that I can see it and move that to the top left corner. If I click on the background, I'll see the layout size needs to also be changed to 1040 by 800. Since this is the same project, the project properties for window size should already be set. If you'd like, you can go ahead and lock that layer so you don't accidentally move this. For our start event sheet, we pretty much only have one thing. So when our keyboard, any key pressed, add action system, go to layout, and we're going to want to go to the game. If you want to edit this to be a particular key, make sure you make the key here match what you put in your instructions. Now if we go into project properties and click view, first layout, you can select which layout you want to be the first one run when the game runs. So I'm going to change that to start. That way when I export a project and someone runs it, this is the screen they would get first. Now I'm going to add another layout with an event sheet for game over. I'm going to rename that event sheet to game over event sheet. I'm going to change my layout there to match 1040 by 800. And I'm also going to add a tiled background to my game over. I'm going to load my game over screen. That is also 1040 by 800. So size 1040, 800. Also going to make this a 40 by 40 grid. Move that to my top left corner. And then one thing I did was I went to game, made sure that my UI layer is the only one unlocked. And I'm going to highlight these three groups of objects. There should actually be nine objects, three labels, three text boxes, and three graphic boxes. And I'm going to copy those. I'm going to go to my game over screen and I'm going to paste those over here on the side. And you can move that to where you think it should be. This is a pretty good spot. There are five spaces here and five spaces here, so it's pretty centered on that left side. I'm going to lock my layer when I'm finished. Go back to projects and open my game over event sheet. And I'm going to add an on start of layout. And on my start of layout, I'm going to go to my game event sheet and I'm going to copy my three text boxes and I'm going to paste them here so that all three of those text boxes will be set to the final value from our game. The only other event I need for now is on key pressed. I chose the escape key. We can have it go to a different layout. I'm going to have it go to the start layout. The reason why I chose escape instead of press any key is so that somebody doesn't hit spacebar to place a block and then the game in and hit it again and then go back to the beginning of the game without seeing their final score. Now the last thing we'll need to do is to go to game event sheet and actually check to see when the game is going to end. So let's create a group at the bottom. We call that game over test, where we test for game over, and I'm not going to make that active on the start. We're only going to activate it when we want to check. So let's add a sub event to that group. It's going to be a system. And that's going to be pick overlapping point. So if we have a board block, 
So what we want to check is if the space where we create a block is full. So that point was 12 times block size. And then we want to check the middle of that. So let's add half a block divided by 2. And then instead of 0 for our y-coordinate, we want half a block also. So that is also going to be block size divided by 2. That way we're checking the middle of the block area. So if we have a board block at that location, then our game should be over. So we're going to do system, go to layout, game over. And game over will take us back to start, and start will take us back to our game, which will relaunch, start of layout, which will clear all of our blocks and dead blocks and board blocks from our screen, as well as resetting all of our scores to zero and re-randomizing all of our blocks. So the only thing we need to do here is add a blank sub event, go to system, and we're going to set group active to our game over test to be deactivated. So that after we test for game over, we'll disable it so that we do not check all the time, only when we need to. And when we would need to is whenever a block is placed. So our blocks are placed in block conversion. And at the end of block conversion, we're going to check remove row. Instead of setting our game over test active here, we're going to let remove row run in case we actually clear the very top line. Then the game wouldn't end because there would still be places to play. So at the end, whenever remove row is deactivated, I'm going to copy and paste that. And I'm going to change that to game over test. And I'm going to set that to activated. Right after our remove row is finished, it will check to see if our game should be over. So let's run that and see what we get. Clear a line so I get some points. So our game ended. We were able to see our score on our game over screen. I hit escape to try again. Takes me back to our start screen. The last thing we're going to implement is a pause screen. Let's go to layers and I'll lock my UI layer and I'm going to create a final layer and I'm going to call that the pause screen. I'm going to insert a tiled background here. I'm going to load the pause graphic. That is again 1040 by 800. Place that in the top left corner. And we'll see that our pause screen will cover up everything behind it. Now, initially, our visibility is set to visible. Let's change that to invisible so that when the game starts, our pause screen is not covering everything up. I'm going to go ahead and lock that pause layer. Then I'm going to uncheck the box so that it doesn't cover up everything that I want to see in my editor. So let's go into control so we can control that and go down to my pause event. And what we want to do is we want to set the visibility of our pause screen based on whether we're paused or not. I'm going to add a sub event system where I compare two values and I'm going to compare the time scale. And as long as that is greater than zero, then I want to set my pause screen to invisible. We'll see that we never named that object. So let me select that and do set visible to invisible, hit done. I'm going to go back to project so I can name my tile backgrounds. Tile background should be our start. So I'm going to change that to start screen. Tile background two should be what's on game over. So let's change that to the game over screen. And tile background three should be the invisible thing on my game. So let's call that the pause screen. Go back to our event sheet and we'll see that the pause screen is set to invisible. Let's add an else. Copy, paste that, and instead of it being invisible, we'll change it to visible. And we'll check to make sure that that works okay. If I pause it, it becomes paused. Then I can unpause it as well. And that should cover everything in this lesson. I'm sure you noticed on the game over screen we had a top 10 score list here, and we will implement that in the next video.